and live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session of, what did I call it? Uh, building Dialect Classifier, I think. Um, we are going to be continuing to work on a project that we've been working on for a bit now. Uh, and the idea for the project, if you're tuning in for the first time, is that it is a virtual assistant um, that will eventually be voice-based and uh, it will ask you questions about how you say certain words or pronounce things and then at the end of all of those questions it will say okay the um, dialect of American English by American here I mean the United States uh, that most closely resembles your own is blah blah um, whatever that is it's based on the same data uh, as the New York Times dialect quiz, if you're familiar with that. Uh, let me see, I can pop that up real quick. New York Times dialect quiz, there we go. Uh, it's like the 18th time I've, I've opened this page. Um, which was built by Josh Katz and Wilson Andrews, and then the data uh, was generously provided for this project uh, by Bert Vox, and it was collected by Bert Vox and Scott Golder in 2003. Uh, so the data we're using is the high elect Harvard dialect survey. Uh, but I don't believe Bert's at uh, Harvard anymore. I think he was at Cambridge for a bit. Anyway, welcome. So for the last two or three uh, sessions of live coding we have been working at. Uh, oh, you can't hear anything. Hmm. One sec. That should be good. How is that? Does that sound better? Uh, Carlos mentioned in the YouTube stream that he couldn't hear anything. Uh, Satya can hear. Um, yeah, let me know if you are still having trouble hearing. It looks like my levels should be pretty good. I can bump them up a little bit. Um, yeah. Excellent. Glad to hear people can hear. Sorry about that. Uh, not sure what was happening there. So, Harvard Dialect Quiz, we've been working on, uh, hi, Nowarus, I don't know how to say that. Hello, welcome. Uh, we've been working on data cleaning because the data was sent to us and I don't think it's going to, uh, uh, oh, okay, nice. Um, so the data was sent to us in this format where it's a uh, comma separated values file, which each column being a question from the quiz, uh, and then each cell being the multiple choice answer that the um, uh, speaker responded to the quiz used. Uh, and Alejandro and Noah Russ can both hear good. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I was messing with my audio settings uh, last week in order to record something with computer audio, so let me know if you have uh, additional funkiness. Thanks for the heads up, Carlos. So this was the format that the data came to us in. We have a little over 47,000 records, um, which is, you know, decent size, not enormous. Uh, and the original dialect quiz had way more uh, questions than we actually want to ask people. So I believe there were 124 questions in the original dialect quiz. I don't know about you, I'm not willing to sit through 124 questions. Um, and also some of them were on things where I think it would be difficult to get the information from um, a voice skill. So um, a lot of them were about pronunciations of certain words where they're both common variants and a voice skill would probably just um, pronounce them the same uh, based on the, the text-to-speech would be my guess. Um, we'll get into it a little bit more and going forward. So what we did instead is we took the uh, uh, questions from the Harvard Dialect Quiz, uh, the, sorry, the New York Times Dialect Quiz, there were 25, uh, and we went through those and used those um, removing the ones that I thought wouldn't work especially well as a dialect quiz and we ended up with 19 questions that I just uh, picked by hand and those ones are in here and I don't know why we can't see the first two 
uh, well, we can't see the first two rows. It's because I'm, mm, no. Anyway, uh, so we have the question text, the uh, key of the question, the number, and then the possible different responses all separated with uh, semicolons. And then we did some fuzzing with uh, tabular data and finally got to this point where uh, so this is actually a tab separated value. We have the information from the dialect quiz, uh, the city, the state, and the zip code of the participant, uh, and then just the 19 questions that we want and then their answers as text. Um, and the reason that we had right at the end of last uh, session, we had some difficulties with reading in our CSV file. Um, we actually had some encoding errors, which I think was probably due to something in Reticulate, which was, so we were using Python last session, but it was Python from within R, so a little bit, um, a little bit different than just a base Python install. Uh, and also, there are in these questions, let me see if I can find a good example, yeah, uh, there are actually commas. Uh, and I think that's why we were having um, dimension mismatch issues. So I saved it as a TSV uh, tab separated value and read it in, no problem. Uh, uh, Robbie said, how are you? You said really sad. Oh, in my uh, demo of the text mood bot for the Alexa blog post, um, I did say that I was really sad. Uh, I was lying. <laughs> I just wanted the, uh, uh, the mood assistant to tell me a uh, fun fact about sea otters. A little coffee. I have my Kaggle mug today since we're doing uh, machine learning. Whoa. Everything's fine. Uh, there was almost a uh, liquid related tragedy. So this is the data set that we have. Um, so you may have noticed that we sort of unlabel encoded it to get the text. Uh, and that's because I'm going to need this text to train our assistant. And we will get to that in the future. But today, uh, I really want to work on training a classifier. Uh, so given somebody's answers, we want to uh, discover or reply to them with the um, area that is most like the area that their language use is similar to. I don't know, it's a weird way to say it. Uh, Miller Time 1999 says, good morning. Happy I was able to catch a stream finally. Well, happy to have you with us. Welcome. Zabar. And so I've been doing some thinking about this, about what our target variable should be. Um, one thing that we could do is we could only look at major cities. Um, so maybe New York, uh, St. Louis, New York again, uh, San Francisco, and maybe technically Eugene, um, and remove cities where we don't have a lot of respondents and then use city as our target variable. Um, that's one option. I think the biggest drawback there is we'd probably get rid of most of our data because it looks like there's a like, I've never heard of Sparta. I've never heard of Pacific Washington, and I, I live in Washington State. Um, I've never heard of uh, Hayworth, no idea where that is. Uh, so the benefit of that is that we might be able to tell people that they're from places that they've heard of, which would be good. The downside is we're probably going to have to end up getting rid of most of our data, which is bad. Another thing we could do is state. Um, again, states. I was going to say most people have heard of most states, but I think that's a very uh, US centric way of thinking about it. And if you asked me to name all the states in India, I don't think I could. Um, so this might be a little bit less accessible, um, but still interesting. Uh, and then the final option is zip code. So zip code or postal code is an area that's usually smaller than a city. Most cities have multiple zip codes. Most large cities in the US have multiple zip codes. Um, so that's going to be the most fine-grained of all of these. City is going to be the next finest grained, and then state's going to be uh, the largest grouping. We could also do regions within the US and assign each state to a region. The big problem with that is that dialect regions and sort of culturally relevant regions don't super duper match up with the exception of the south. The south is a dialect region and it's also a culturally relevant region. Um, but like the 
um, inland north is not something that people talk about as a, a cultural region, but it is a dialect region. So that might be, uh, that might also be slightly confusing for people. So, I believe when we went through the dialect quiz, the final classification that we got out was uh, based on city. So it was cities that were most similar to my usage. And my top two cities, as I remember, were Newport News, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, which are both fairly accurate. I'm from Fluvanna County. You will not have heard of it, uh, which is in Virginia. It's kind of near Richmond. Um, and then my third city was St. Louis, which is the major city nearest where my mom is from. Um, so my cousins live in St. Louis. So that seemed fairly relevant to me. But uh, the visualizations, I believe, are probably zip code based. So... I'm just thinking through how I want to do this. I think I want my classifier to focus on zip code, probably. We could do multitask learning where we try to learn both state and zip code, but the problem with that is each zip code is going to be uniquely tied to a single state. So there's going to be a lot of mutual information in the direction of state to zip code that won't be super helpful. Yeah, so I think what we might do is zip code, because we do have, we probably aren't going to have examples for every zip code, is the, the problem. Mm. Actually, you know what, let's, uh, let's stop talking in hypotheticals. Uh, so we've got a Jupyter Notebook here, and I'm going to get rid of whoop, uh, this so I have a little bit more space. Uh, and as you can see, we successfully read in our uh, data set, which is tab delimited. Uh, and I'm going to call this question data. And oh, we are in Python, so I'm going to remove the spaces around assignment for arguments. Uh, and then I want the value. I want value counts. Do I have to say for a specific uh, column to get that? I will say I'm a little bit less, uh, there we go. Uh, I'm a little bit less fluent in Python than I am in, um, in R, specifically for pandas. Um, but I get by, mostly. <laughs> uh, Miller Time said, can we see the distribution across state or zip code? Great minds. Um, Okay, so we have, it looks like we have 11,000 different zip codes. Um, I don't think this is going to work. This is, there's no way this is going to work. No, this is going to throw so many errors. It worked, okay. Um, so we have about 11,000 zip codes for about a third of them, roughly. We only have one example. Oh, that's not great. Um, hmm. Let me just do a quick Google. How many zip codes are there in the US? Uh, no, that's about, that one's about Canada. The top result was about Canada. <laughs> Noted. Uh, the blah, 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 blah. There are at least 40,000 five-digit zip code areas in the U.S. Okay. So we have um, less than a quarter of, slightly over a quarter of zip codes are represented, but we only have um, uh, multiple samples for what's 7,000 divided by 4,000, 40, sorry. Uh, but we only have multiple samples for about 17% of them, so roughly a fifth. Uh, but, 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 but. Noted. So. That's not the best news in terms of really good coverage. 
Um, um, Nick said, hi, Rachel. I used to follow you on YouTube. Came to Twitch just for your stream. Aw, thank you. Uh, I am still streaming on YouTube. I'm streaming on the Rasa channel, R-A-S-A. -A. Uh, but welcome. So tricky things. Uh, downside of using zip code. There are more zip codes in the United States than we have data for. We have very sparse data, even for those zip codes that we do have information for. Mm. We could, we could do something like uh, take, start by taking like the top 20% most populated zip codes. The big problem with that is that the US population is super, super un unevenly distributed. So those are mostly gonna be on the East Coast. And I think there's already an East Coast bias in the data because it was collected at Harvard. Um, and I think Harvard students are more likely to be from the East Coast because that's, that's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> and there's always, um, even for very good colleges in the U.S., there's a, quite a strong locality effect. I went to a state college. I had a great time. Um, it was William and Mary, if you're, if you're curious. <sighs> How many cities do we have? Mm, mm -mm. Not cities. How many distinctive combinations of city and... Um, state do we have because if we just go by city names we're liable to have like 18 springfields uh it's a pretty common name in the u.s uh how can i do value counts across two columns pandas value counts two columns stack overflow question uh yep that's my question uh group by excellent and this is pandas it is pandas, okay. Question data dot group by, and then it looked, it was a list, right? Right, uh, and it was, nope, we don't care about the zip, we care about the city and the state. City, state, I don't know why it's uppercase. Uh, value counts, I done, I done messed up. Uh, oh, sorry, it was not value counts, it was size. <laughs> so, yeah, we have fairly, um, I would say fairly interesting distribution of cities here. Um, so you can see that we have uh, city, don't want to tell, IA, Indiana, I think, uh, suburban, St. Louis, through listening to radio and dot, 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 New York, period, Texas, period, St. period, Louis. Um, and then Youngstown, Ohio, we have eight, Ypsilanti, Michigan, one, Yukon, Oklahoma to Yup, Virginia. No idea where Yup is, if that's even a real place. Uh, and Sangram says, do some. I don't know that this is more helpful for the specific thing that we're doing here. Because this looks like zip code rather than, oh, actually, you know what? This is probably the sum of the zip code for every person who is in this, uh, uh, in this group. So it's assuming that zip code is some sort of count. It is not. It's a categorical variable. Uh, so I'm going to go back to size. But if you had um, something where you could sum over it, I think that would be a good uh, hint. So thank you, Sangram. Uh, Nawara says, first time watching your stream, but before I watched a pair of your YouTube videos, I really like your approach. Oh, thank you. Uh, speaking of approach, what are we going to do here? 
So it looks like we still are, are going to have the same sparsity problem with cities that we do with um, zip codes. Welcome to Hacky Python with your host, Rachel. Um, so I'm using this Boolean column that we have created, and I'm trying to use it to index into here so we only see the things where we have more than five examples of the person from of the city. So we have 13,000 options. That's still like a lot of classes. Uh, and Sondram says, oh, sorry, size was it. Oh, no worries. Uh, I think it would be, would be helpful. Um, Neek says, please start your own YouTube channel, ooh, sorry, uh, with machine learning content. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, I'll take that under consideration, thank you. Uh, and this is showing us really nicely the problem of using city because we have an Aberdeen in South Dakota with 10 people in it, uh, 10 respondents, not 10 total people. Oh, well, maybe South Dakota is pretty... Uh, sparsely populated, uh, and then in Aberdeen and Washington that had seven respondents. So even uh, filtering pretty, um, pretty aggressively, we still have 13,000 classes, which is a lot of classes, which is probably, you can't see that, we have 13,000 classes, which is a lot of classes, um, and probably why the um, original approach was to use um, Get rid of that little little sliver that's not covered by my green screen. Uh, K-nearest neighbors rather than some sort of classification algorithm. I do want to try a classification algorithm though because uh, I want to have some idea of feature importance for the final classification so I can tell people about that. So if I'm like, you're from Pennsylvania, and they're like, how do you know? And I'll be like, you said bubbler or whatever it is that people say in Pennsylvania. Yins is pretty common, I think. What if we look at even bigger cities? What if we only look with respondents with more than 10? Um, okay, so then we have uh, 649, which is still a fair number. Uh, Toledo, Ohio, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Washington, DC. DC is not a state, it's a uh, district. Uh, Wichita, Kansas, Abilene, Kansas, I have not heard of that, Acton, Massachusetts, Akron, Ohio, Albany, New York, Albuquerque, New Mexico. About 15, how many classes would we have then? 400. Akron, Albany, Albuquerque, Alexandria, Allentown, uh, oh, that's where Marching Band Championships was. Uh, St. Louis, St. Louis, okay, so we got, we got a little cleaning to do, it looks like. Um, Tampa, Washington, D.C., and Wichita. 15 seems to be a pretty good elbow point for me. So that's 400 classes, which is still like a lot of classes. Um, but given that we have 40,000 examples and uh, kind of a lot of features that we, well, 19 features isn't that bad. That feels doable to me. That feels tractable. Um, yeah, 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 let's try that. Um, so going for unique city-state combination only looking at cities that have had more than 15 respondents, which is probably going to be a pretty good correlation to cities that have a lot of people in them, unless there's like a weird like Harvard contingent of a bunch of people from like, I don't know, Dinwiddie or whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, Miller Time says, in the name of saving time, would you avoid city given the freeform text input and the non-standard inputs? That is a good question. I think what I'm going to do is uh, just do pretty standard text cleaning um, and get rid of punctuation and, yeah, punctuation. I was trying to decide if I wanted to get rid of spaces or not um, and capitalization. And I think that should give us a fairly good jumping off point. All right, uh, Robbie says, uh, be safe, you guys, from COVID-19. Yeah, wash your hands. It's a big thing. So, uh, ugh, this is another thing that I'm very familiar with in 
uh, R and less with um, Python. Where's my R? <laughs> I reshuffled my uh, icons, which is always a poor choice. I know I can't find anything. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see, will this pop up on both screens? Nope. R Studio, there we go. All right, so I'm going to do this in R just because it'll make my life easier and be slightly faster. And then this needs to change because we are in the wrong, uh, wrong thing to do here. Project none. All right. Uh, let's get my correct path and then document project backend open. And this needs to be the working directory. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of extra uh, data cleaning, and I think it'll make our lives a teeny bit easier to uh, do do things in. Not that you do things in your life. That's sort of a weird way of saying it. All right, so uh, we have our data cleaning, and uh, questions with text is our excellent uh, questions with text is our target uh, is the data frame that we end up returning so we can look at the first couple lines of this we are now uh, again using R not Python so the syntax is going to be a little bit different excellent and then we want to do some cleaning of the city column so questions with text uh, and this is uh, a pipe just like the pipe character in bash very similar it takes everything on the right side passes it to the left if i did that the correct direction uh, and then uh, select city and then uh, I want to use tidy text, which is a package uh, that I should have loaded in because I've loaded in the tidy burst. Um, clean text. That's a great page. <laughs> uh, tidy text. Remove punct. I know you can also do this in Python. Um, it's just slightly slower for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, can we just do uh, unnest? Tokens? Do I not have tidy text? Toidy. That's the uh, Popeye version. Oh, all right. Uh, packages dot install tidy text. All right, fine. I'm just going to use the Packages, install, tidy text. able to run this command. Input must be a character vector of any length. Uh, or a list of character vectors, each of which has length one. Okay. 
Uh, I think I'm just going to pass it in the column directly and see what they say about that. No pickleball method for unnest tokens applied to object of class character. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. I know one of these is going to become the name of the column. Nope. All right. I'll pull up the the textbook I'm looking at. Unnest token functions. Yes. Mm hmm. Text data frame. Yes. Data frame, unnest tokens, word, text. So text is the thing we're unlisting, unnesting. Okay. So what we got to do is the data frame and then unnest tokens, and I'm doing this so I don't have to import the whole library, just the specific things that I need. And then the uh, thing that we want it to be called is city lowercase, and the thing that it is currently called is city uppercase. Yeah, excellent. So you can see this is uh, Sukasuna. Again, some places that I've never heard of. Uh, and some of them have been split into two rows. So that's not ideal for us, actually. Um, so San Diego is a city. This is one word. Sorry, it's one name. There is a space between the San and the Diego. And this has been treated as two words because it is, in fact, two tokens. Uh, New York. Fairmount Salicoa Valley is apparently one place in Georgia. I have not heard of that previously. There's a lot of places in the US. It's a, it's a big, it's a big place. Uh, all right, so I think actually this is maybe not going to be the best option for us. <sighs> Back to text cleaning Python strip. Go back to here. Uh, best way to strict punctuation from a string. Da, da, da. Uh, all right. So it looks like the Stack Overflow question boom, is talking a lot about. Um, uh, different ways of, when was this? When, what would higher versions of Python mean? Uh, this is from November 08. So higher versions of Python almost certainly means Python 3. So I we'll want to use this one. All right, let's give that a try. New cell. Uh, and the string that we want is question data dot city. Uh, and then let's take the first four. Series object. Series object. Oh, that's right. It's a series. Ugh. Uh, all right. Um, strip punk from column pandas. Fast punctuation removal with pandas. That's what I'm looking for. Here we go. This is a self-answered post. Before below, I outline a common problem in NLP domain and propose a few performant methods to solve it. That's a, huh, that's one way to write a blog post. All right. Um, Uh, string dot replace, very easy to code, quite readable, but slow. 
Are we going to have to do this multiple times? I don't know what Alexa is going to give us back or any other voice platform we end up using. So we might need to actually run this every... No, no, we're not getting this information back from humans. We are only providing this to the classification algorithm, and then this is what we're going to tell our users back. So we're only going to have to do this once. We're not going to have to do this in prod. So we can probably just use, uh, use this. Squinch, bring it back over. Uh, squinch. All right. So the column that we're looking for is city, city, uh, and the data frame is called question data. And I'm pretty sure I need to import, mm, do I need to import anything or is this built in? We'll find out. Oh, I modified it in place. Well. Um, so the other thing that I would want to do is make everything lowercase, I think. Uh, and we have about 9,000 classes, and most of those are not going to... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have about 9,000 classes. Most of those are not going to have multiple um, instances. So we are going to have a little bit of an unbalanced class question. Um, our top classes are Chicago, Seattle, New York, Kansas City, and Houston. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised Seattle's so far up there, but yeah. uh, I don't I don't mind that. Uh, I I uh, I'm pretty sure in Python it's too lower. But pandas to lower whole column. Yep, my exact question. Uh, x dot stir dot lower. Excellent. Uh, so, see, if we had easy piping, I know there is a way to do pipes in uh, Python, but I always forget what it is. Um, and it's not exactly the same as it is in R, but I would use it here. Da, 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 da. Dot strain dot lower instead of replace. And then, yeah. Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, only one person from Indianapolis? Indianapolis, I think that might be misspelled. I'm not the best at spelling though, so um, perhaps not the best person to ask about this. All right, so we have um, simple data cleaning. Uh, and from here, we can boop y'all on down, look at our top states and city combo. Uh, so Yakima, Yonkers, York, Yorktown, Youngstown, Akron, Albany, Albuquerque, Alexandria, and Allentown, which are all cities that I've heard of, uh, which is sort of a good not that cities that I've heard of is a good way of listing the most well-known cities in the U.S., but it, like, at least it's helpful, you know. All right, excellent. So I think this can be, and then 415, so I think we gained like three or so uh, cities due to the disambiguating, um, which I'm fine with. Uh, that still feels fairly, fairly doable. Okay, a sip of water. Hmm. I don't know if you can see, but it's a hedgehog themed glass. It says, can't touch this. Isn't that cute? It was a gift from a friend. Okay. Oh, um, General Goss said, did you pick up R or before Python or, yeah, I started with R. Um, and I still think for a lot of tabular data transformations, especially if you're familiar with SQL, R is a little bit more, um, user-friendly. 
is it's just my personal opinion. Also, if you're going to be doing uh, a lot of statistics stuff, I would recommend R over Python, just because most statistics researchers will release their research as R packages and not Python packages. I so we have clean data. Um, I want to create a new column that is city plus state. How do I do that? Uh, pandas cat columns string. Uh, so I want to concatenate two columns. Add to data frame. Uh, so I want a new column that says Akron, Ohio, Albany, New York, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I can take those pieces of information and use that as my target variable. Uh, adding columns. Pandasteri string cat. Concatenate strings in the series index with the given separator. All right. Cat, sep, and a rep. Okay. Index, inner, outer. Huh. Series, index, data frame, memory, data array, where to same length as the calling one. Will this work with two? Well, not passing others. All values are concatenated to a single string. Okay, so I do want to pass others. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Uh, I don't think I've used this previously. Let's just. Try it. Uh, and let's do the first five. Uh, and then we want to dot stir dot cat and then our second five, which is gonna be not city, but state. And then, yeah, so um, for join, probably want like a space <laughs> or something. Uh, what was the sep? Sep is gonna be the separator. And just like a space. Boise, Idaho, Pigfield, Maryland, Burlington, Vermont. Do people say Vermont, Burlington? No, nobody says the state before the, the, the city. Everyone says the city first and then the state. Okay. All right, so I think that will work. Uh, and let's just assign this to a new column. And I think I have to, oh, this is one of the, funky things about Python. I think I can't refer to a column by name on the same row that I assign it as unless it's with the like indexing thing. Um, so I'm going to call this target. Uh, I'm going to call it class target. So this is the thing that we're targeting for classification. Uh, and now if we look at the head of question data, First, we should use the Python syntax is the first thing that we should do. Otherwise, we are not going to be happy. Uh, we should have a new row called class target, and we do. Fantastic. Very happy with that. OK. Now, uh, I want to All right. So this we want to keep. This. OK, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to narrow it down to only some of our classes. So we want to get rid of the uh, new 
That's right, because this is value counts. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, so the thing that I'm doing here is I want to get only rows where the class target variable is in a group that occurs more than 15 times in our total data set. So, uh, Uh, I don't think this is going to work. Um, Python check if, what am I looking for? So I have a column, if value in, no, I'm just going to ask for the direct thing that I want, not the step that I'm on. So the thing that I want to do is Python get only columns where only rows with column value that occurs x times. That's what I want to Google. Excellent. And then the first example is the thing that I want. Uh, I have a data frame in pandas. Would like to get all the values of a certain column that appear more than x times. All right. Get the count. OK. Uh, All right. Wow. Wait, okay, what's going on here? So we have a data frame. All right. And then we're getting the value counts of the column. And then, huh, all right. No, I want to filter on it. Uh, value counts. Query filter on counts, we plot the value. More than two values. What does this person actually want to do? Get all the values, yeah, okay, and then we want to filter on it. But I think that should be, once we have the values, I think filtering with them should be slightly more straightforward, right? One hopes. Okay, uh, can I use just, Try this one. That is, quote, the best and fastest example. So how is this different from what I was doing here? So uh, we're getting the value counts. OK, same thing that I'm doing there. And then we're resetting the index with a name count. So instead of the index being the ID of the row, it is now the count. And then we are getting the counts of greater than 15 from the index. No. Mm, yes, OK. Uh, name, question data is not defined. Fair enough. OK. So these should all be, yeah, 415, which is what we had. Excellent. Oh, now i got to remember the pipe thing. I think it's like, uh, I think it's like so. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. And then I, you tab in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so let's call these common cities. Uh, and then we want to filter based on the common cities. Uh, pandas filter by value of cell in uh, 
value in common, in column. Is this what I want? Python and R tips. Uh, how to select rows of a panda, pandas data frame based on a single value of a column. Mm -hmm. 2002, 2002. Uh, does not equal specific value, NAN based on a list. All right, so the um, specific thing that we want is, is in years. Years is the name of their column. So what we can do is, uh, oh wait, no, we, we gave it a name. Uh, dot is in, and then common cities. All right. And then we should be able to use that to filter. Actually, no, not just the not just the target. Filter the whole data set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and now we have twenty four thousand examples. So we've lost about half of our examples, which is not ideal. But we'll see what our um, uh, we'll see what our Common cities data frame. Uh, we'll see what our accuracy looks like. So let's go through and clean up this notebook a little bit because I'm at a place where I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far. So we read in our data. Yes, uh, we don't actually need to look at the number of value counts only. Um, tidy up city names a bit is what we're doing here. Uh, we can get rid of this. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Uh, add new column with city and state together is what we did there. Get rid of that, save this. Um, get cities, city plus state combos that occur 15 plus times, and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's what that whole block of code is doing. Excellent. Uh, so I think we can actually move this up to this cell as well. Excellent. Uh, all right. And let's uh, restart our kernel and then run from the top just to make sure that we haven't, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like the whole point. Um, so this is giving me a fresh session so I can make sure that um, the things that I've done in the order that I have them in my notebook right now are still going to work. Uh, and if we look at, uh, nope, still not the syntax for that, we should see, um, yep, nope, no, okay, something's gone horribly wrong. Uh, so we, we have four columns here, we should have like, 25 columns. So that's not right. Something's happened. Uh, all right, let's go back and, and think about it. Uh, question data. Mm -hmm. So let's look at question data here and make sure that we didn't make the problem there. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, I see. Um, uh, what's it, Alt Shift Dash? Shift Control Dash? Nope, that uh, zoomed out. I'm trying to remember the shortcut for splitting a cell at the uh, current cursor place, and I don't remember what it is, so. All right, and then let's look at the head of that. OK, 
Okay, so this is fine. Is it from when we opened R earlier? Pretty sure it is. Pretty sure we created ourselves a uh, <sighs> all right. We created ourselves a problem. So uh, right now we do not have any of the actual questions, uh, which is a bit of a problem because we do in fact want the actual questions. Uh, All right, uh, datacleaning.r was the file, and I need to uh, create a new thing. Okay, so what did we do to cause this problem? Open this, set us the working directory, make you big. All right. Questions with text, data subset. So let's just run through this line by line and see what that looks like. So, so reading in the uh, data, big data copy, parsed with column specifications. What does data original look like? Okay, so we do have it at that point. Uh, and then we have our data key, very good. And then uh, data key is still small, which is fine. And then data subset, which is the correct dimensions. And then uh, okay. All right, and what does questions with text look like? Three variables, okay. Remember when I said we were done with data cleaning? Turns out we're not. I guess we've still been doing more data cleaning today, but it's in Python, so it feels different. All right, uh, where did we go wrong? Empty data frame. So it looks like empty data frame is not actually ever getting anything added to it. So let's check out that loop. Uh, so we're converting answers to text I. Uh, so what, the, what are the call names of data subset? Is that my issue? No, that looks right. Oh, you know what? I bet it's because we hadn't. Okay, that looks good. Now let's do this. Excellent. All right, that looks good now. And then finish up here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Comment this out so we don't actually overwrite our file in the future. Uh, Miller Time says you only grabbed columns two through four in line 28 with an empty data frame, which leaves you only three columns. Yeah, I think the problem is that I hadn't read in this function. So when it applied it, it just gave me nothing back, uh, which may also be what you're saying. And back to, whoop. all right, excellent. That looks correct now. Uh, so let's go back to building our classifier. We can get rid of these, uh, these guys. Fantastic. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I don't think I've run this one yet. Great. And that looks like what we're looking for. 10 out of 10. All right. So we have, uh, this is just the head, which is why we have five rows. Uh, there are not five rows total in our entire data set. So we have our target variable, which is going to be city plus state. We have reduced it to only the most popular city plus state combo. So we have about 400 classes and about 20,000 plus or minus um, examples, which if it were just 19 random variables, I wouldn't feel very comfortable with. But because it's the 19 variables that were handpicked to be the most discriminative given the task by uh, presumably Josh Katz, 
uh, I feel okay about it. I'm not that worried. Uh, Miller Time says, woohoo, indeed. Oh, I'm out of water. Still have coffee though. I love coffee. <laughs> okay, so I think we are not saving for some reason. Please save. Please save. Do I have to use the button? Apparently I have to use the button. That's great. Love that UX. Really doing it for me. Okay, so we have our data frame pretty much good to go, I think. Um, from here, we're going to need to do our, um, from here on out, the things that we will be doing, we will be doing every time we run the code. So we wanna be a little bit more uh, judicious in what we do. Uh, because the longer it takes for this piece of code to run where we take in the answers and then apply our... Well, actually, this bit we're going to run every time. The training we're not going to run any, every time, and the classification we will run, it, run every time. So we're going to be doing inference but not training multiple times. I mean, we can go back and retrain if we want, but... All right, so... Uh, converting the data frame that we have now into a more machine-readable format. Uh, yes. And as I remember, we actually did, there we go. Uh, we imported sklearn on stream the other day, but we did not do anything else. Import pandas. A. Um, do y'all see me importing NumPy? I don't see me importing NumPy. What? I'm not importing NumPy. No, file one is to import pandas. All right, let's just try restarting the session uh, just real quick. See if that fixes it. I'm not importing NumPy. Like, I am through pandas, but I'm not, like, weird. Deeply, deeply, deeply weird. Import pandas. What is going on here? All right, deeply odd. Uh, let's try pandas as pd import xgboost. Did I misspell import? Because I have been known to do that in the past. From sklearn.model selection import test, train test split. Okay. Fascinating. Uh, Anurag says, buggy VS code, save and then run. Save. Run everybody. All right, that worked. Um, thanks. Weird. <laughs> Very weird. Actually, I think I, um, I talked to the VS code folks when they were thinking about adding Py and Jupyter support. Was the VS Code? I think it was the VS Code folks. It would have been two years ago at PyCon. Uh, I'm happy they have it. It's nice. All right. What am I doing here? Let me let me write out the steps in comments just so I have a little guide. Because uh, I think we can have our code ready to be put into our. Well, well, we'll see how far we can get today before I get. It's a little after ten. I'm just keep going until I get tired. Let me double check I don't have a meeting right now. That would be unfortunate for me and also whoever I was supposed to be meeting with. All right, yeah, I don't have anything until 11. Uh, so first we want to remove leaky columns. So those are columns that um, 
uh, trivially tell you the uh, thing that you're trying to guess, right? So we have a column called zip code. If I know your zip code, I know what city you're from, right? So we want to make sure that we remove those columns. Um, convert to probably label encoding. Test train split, convert to XG boost format. Uh, XG boost, so if you're not familiar with it, it's a gradient boosting library that's written in C. And there is a, um, so you know how Pandas has a data structure called data frames, and R has a struct data structure called data frames and data tables. Um, XGBoost has its own data structure that is similar, that is uh, better at handling sparse data and more memory efficient, uh, which makes it much faster to train and test your models. Um, train and, and um, makes your modeling faster, both at training time and also at inference time, is what I am trying to say there. Uh, and then train XGBoost model. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to remove the leaky columns for now. Uh, and from there, I don't know, I might call it a day after that. My voice is starting to get a little bit uh, iffy. I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely can. And I can never remember how to <laughs> pandas drop columns data frame. Yep, that's the one. Uh, delete data frame column name. Oh, and this is the ones where you can't use the, uh, can't use column names as an attribute. You have to use them as the, the text string. All right. Uh, I think I want to make a copy of this. I think I want to call it, it's not that big. I'm not super worried about memory management at the moment. Uh, training data equals city. We want to remove, that should be in quotes. So what are we removing? City. Can I pass it a list? We'll do multiple ones at the same time. State. Zip. Zop. Zoi. Zoi. Zip. I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. Uh, Invalid key. Okay, so I do have to pass it in one at a time. God, there's got to be a better way to do this. There probably is. Still not going to work. Excellent. So we have our questions, and then we have our class target, and that's all that we have in our data frame right now. So that'll work, and that'll work nicely. Uh, and then we want to convert to label encoding. Python label encoding. 
uh, label encoding, multiple columns in Scikit-Learn. Uh, and the reason that we didn't use the uh, basic encodings that we got with the data set in the first place is because we have no way to decode that. So we had no way of saying, hey, it's a three, but really it means that someone's saying use, right? Um, so by starting with the text and then doing our own label encoding, we can take that encoder and reverse that transformation um, so that we can get text in and out rather than just numbers, if that makes sense. I don't want to do a one hot encoder. Okay. All right, let's try this. Um so, and then our data frame is called common cities data frame. And then x is just the argument for this lambda function. Label encoder is not defined. I see, I see, I see. So that is, label encoder is from, is an object of class, goodbye, uh, no, this is a class, this is a function, hmm. Name label encoder is not defined. So where are you? Nope, that's the chat. <laughs> where are you getting label encoder from here? Look at fit. All right. All right, excellent. And then let's look at D. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so what we have now is a dictionary that has a label encoder because label encoders take in one dimensional arrays and it saved a separate label encoder for each column. And we can take that uh, label encoder and reverse apply it to our uh, uh, each of our columns in order to get the text back out. So, all right, train data. All right, so I'm gonna pop these up to the top. Keep it tidy. Uh, I, oh, I can never remember the exact uh, order that things go in. I'm pretty sure this collections are built in. I think collections is a built-in, so collections is going to go on the top. Pretty sure. So I use a, a linter, right? So you don't have to remember the order of your imports. All right. Uh, I think I'm actually going to call it there. 
uh, label encode the varia variables. All right, uh, so I think I'm going to call it a day there. Uh, we did a fair amount today. We got almost to the point where we're going to train our model. Um, almost. But real, real close. So the only things that we have to do now is we need to take our data set and uh, do our test train split and then convert into the XGBoost format, which is called something <laughs> XGBoost uh, data format. D matrix is what it's called. Uh, and then uh, actually get to training and uh, evaluation. I'll add another cell here. Model evaluation. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting to the point where we can start uh, adding the fun bit to the dialect quiz. So it's not just like, hey, how are you? Answer some questions. Then we're not going to tell you anything else from there. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully, uh, we'll continue to make really good progress in the future. So thank you for joining today, everybody. I hope you found it. Um, you know, helpful, interesting, fun, any of those things I'd be delighted with. Uh, have a great week, and I will see you on Friday when I think we're going to get uh, to to a trained model. Um, I would say this wasn't really data cleaning. This was more like prep for, for model training. I guess technically it's data cleaning, but for me, the big part of data cleaning was the first one where we were taking in uh, data that wasn't in the format that I ideally would have liked to have it to have been in, and now we're just preparing it to go into the model. All right. Thank you for joining. I will see you on Friday, and um, yeah, stay healthy, wash your hands, and I'll talk to you then. Bye.